Hello, I'm Kyle for Hibigon, Japanese Bigfoot. And what is this animal, this creature, this decomposed body found in the forest in Japan, in northern Hiroshima Prefecture, on or near Mount Hiba? Mount Hiba, famous for the Hibigon, the Japanese Bigfoot. Well, let's look at it together. Today we'll just look at this whole body shot. We'll look at the close-up next time. So, we have a very large creature. Look at the farmer's calves in his rubber boots. And look at the creature's calves. What is that? Is that two or three times bigger? Two or three times wider? If it's two times wider, it's four times thicker all around. If it's three times wider, it's nine times thicker all around. I said in the book that those legs look like snow pants over top of ski boots. And those legs are dried out and shrunken. The meat is all gone. Now you have to use your imagination to reinflate them with muscle and pumping hot blood. You have to inflate the whole creature with, with meat. And then the thing that really impresses you is not so much the height as the girth. Remember how the people up in Tohoku described their ohito, ohito, hibigan type creatures, as big around as a sumo wrestler. Yeah, I can, I can see that. Now remember the common eyewitness description from right around here that the creature was twice as big as a man, or its torso was twice as big as a man's. Next, this creature is bipedal. See how its legs lie stretched straight out? Very different from the legs of a supine gorilla. We looked at this possible Sasquatch cadaver before and how its straight legs and straight arms are very different from those of a dead mountain lion or a bear. Well, this pose is very different from a gorilla on its back or even a gorilla lying on his tummy. Gorilla legs, well, I, I guess they can straighten out if they want to, but they don't relax there. This creature stood erect. The hand is a human-like hand. I'm interested in the elbow, and I'm not sure exactly where it is, but... From where I think it is, if you put the creature's hand down by its side, the fingertips reach to about its knees. So those are some long arms and thick. The upper arm looks about as big as the man's uh, waist, and that's deflated. And just look at that upper body and those shoulders. There's no neck visible. The physique is, well, it's hard to say in life, in flesh and blood, if it would have looked closer to this mother he begone or this father he begone, which I have reconstructed here. 
and our friend R.C. much better reconstructed here. Hard to say. Maybe somewhere in between. The mouth is enormous and frightening. The head is enormous. Looks like our farmer could wear that creature's skull like a samurai helmet. And remember that head is without flesh. Flesh it out, as our friend R.C. did in his second beefed up version. Now look at the jawbone. Even from here, and look at the farmer's jaw. Imagine the bite force. It makes a bear jaw look dainty. And a bear, well, bears are not known for being dainty. Bears can wreck you up pretty good. Yeah, this fella could, if he wanted to, he could bite open your head like, like Beef Wellington. Look at that jaw. Now the shape of the skull comes close to a gorilla skull, but the teeth are human. Well, we'll look at the teeth next time. Like the gorilla, our friend here is not weighed down with a lot of frontal cortex. Not a lot of front and top brains, but that doesn't make him a dummy. He might not be writing piano sonatas or lyrical poetry, but he's smarter than me in his domain, in his line of business. Finally, this creature has the perfect camouflage for its environment. It's the color of forest shadow, the color of forest shade. So it could just stand still anywhere, and you won't see it. Okay, what have I missed? You let me know. And what is this creature? It's not a deer. It's not a pig. It's not a bear. It's not a man, but it does have human teeth and other humanoid features. Well, we know what it is. Do I wish we had more photos? Better quality, different angles. Yes, yes I do. Am I darned grateful for these two photos? Yeah, yeah, I sure am. Am I trying to find the source of the photos? You bet. I'm writing an email to Fuji TV today. Thank you, you outdoorsmen and outdoorswomen who are helping me with the location. We still need an ID on these plans. I'm going to email the Hiroshima City Botanical Garden and maybe they can help. Okay, we'll look at the close-up next time. I hope you're having a good week. I am. I roasted a pork loin this morning and yeah, we're looking forward to having that for dinner. I hope it's good. Camera Girl made this one panel graphic novel on the whiteboard. The boy's name is Timmy. He's a good-hearted but dim-witted little loser. He's in love with the girl and dreams of marrying her one day. She ignores him. She wishes he'd leave her alone. Timmy will never, ever receive the least kindness from her. The End